All right. So um, now we will move on to Marin, who is going to be presenting on WH questions in Ihanzu with a special focus on the influence of noun classes on WH words. So Marin, please, the floor is yours. Well, this is my overview. First of all, I'm going to give like a little background on WH questions. Then I'm going to show, going to be showing you the WH questions in Nihansu. Um, then the word order for these questions, and then my special focus, which is the influence of noun classes on especially which and whose, and uh, conclusion at the end. So uh, for the background in WH questions, there is. Um, uh, in general, two types of uh, WH question construction with some examples or uh, some, um, what's it called, exceptions and some mixed versions, but usually it's either a WH movement or WH in situ. And questions in this uh, WH category are uh, what, where, who, sometimes if the language has that, who's and whom, uh, when, why, which, and how, even though how doesn't technically have WH, and sometimes also what kind, how many, something like that, something that doesn't have its own word in English or German, but some languages, uh, as we're going to see later, do actually. Um, yes, so WH movement would be something that, for example, happens in English and German. So the WH question word always moves to the initial position of the phrase, as in the girl eats ice cream, what does the girl eat? Or in German, das Mädchen ist ice cream, was ist das Mädchen? Uh, there are a few exceptions to that. For example, echo question, the girl eats what? Um, multiple WH questions like who eats what? Or also questions with um, either a focus or information that is already expe expected to be given. And then for the WH in C2, uh, this happens, for example, in Mandarin, Chinese, and Japanese. Um, there, the WH question word stays in the same place as the element that is being asked for. And yes, uh, I have an example from Chinese with the uh, ni he cha, which means you drink tea, and ni he shema means what do you drink? Um, so you can see that the question word stays in the same position as the tea. And obviously, in multiple WH questions, all WH words also stay in C2. And then here's a list of WH question words in Ihansu. So this is just the basic list of what I found out or also took from the archive material. Um, some of these are very simple, just what we have seen this in Elizabeth's presentation uh, with Ntuni and where is P. Um, then there are a few that have um, other versions, like for example, we can see here Nali has Matungo Ke at which time. And um, at the bottom with who's, which, and how many, those are the ones that change depending on the noun class, but we'll get into that um, in, in the presentation. Um, okay, now for the word order of WH questions, the Hansu is, as Elizabeth also spoiled, uh, um, a WH in situ question. Um, so, for example, if we have the, um, the sentence, umunansu ukimba limbo, the girl sings a song, you would ask, what does the girl sing? Just by um, saying, umunansu ukimba tuni, so the girl sings what basically from the um, the word order. And the rest of the sentence stays grammatically the same. And this also works with who, so umunansu kimba limbo. And if we have uh, the who, so who sings the song, we have nyanyu no kimba limbo. Here, actually, something grammatically changes, but that is, I need you to ignore this for now. We'll get into this uh, as the presentation goes on. Um, it is because it's also possible to pull the WH word to the initial position. But I have to say that this was never the, um, the natural reaction from, from Nico, from the speaker. He always uh, used the in situ version first. And then I specifically asked for what would happen if we pull this word to the front. And he gave me this version. So if we have the sentence, Muntu ukoli humongo, um, the person is at the river. And we were to ask, where is the person? The um, first uh, regular in situ version he gave me was Muntu ukoli pe. So, basically the same thing just with p and if we put the p at the beginning he said p nukuli muntu as you can see here um this little dash is just supposed to mean that the vowels merge there i have like a little version of nukuli muntu uh, in the back 
I just wanted to make sure that you can see which word is which, which word is what. Um, and this also means where is the person. Um, when the WH word is pulled to the initial position, uh, the rest of the phrase becomes some type of a relative clause, or at, at least it's initialized by the relative, mar relative marker N or N and then whatever follows. And um, so I thought that a more accurate translation might be where is it that the person is at if we were to specifically translate that, but the speaker said that it was interchangeable. Um, there are also WH words in Hansu that have to be realized uh, through two words in English or German, for example, how many, but in Hansu that works with the Nga, Nga, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, so if we have the sentence, umunansu wilua kangui, uh, the girl cooks one meal, and we were asking, how many meals does the girl cook? It becomes umunansu wilua kanga. So the meal here seems to not be realized uh, by its own word at all. And I guess it's just expressed through context of the class markers. Um, also, I just think that in Ihansu, a meal just might be a result that's always connected with cooking. So you might not need to say it specifically. And um, I wasn't sure which class marker this was. So the uh, C with a question mark just means it's some kind of class marker. Um, and we can see at the bottom uh, the Mui, uh, which is in the example seven, is just the cardinal number of for one. And when we ask how many, it uh, becomes, or it's get, get in, it gets interchanged with the Nga for how many, with uh, the same class marker though. Um, then there's also alternative question words. So some WH questions have alternative ways to be uh, realized or formed. So for the word which, have the sentence, which river do you fish in? You could once, uh, for once say, Wizua Momongo Nu Uli, which means which river do you fish in? Or you could also say, Wizua Momongo Ke. So this Ke here uh, is. A question particle, while nuuli actually means which, even um, with the class marker here, nuuli, but that's the, it's going to be a whole other thing. Um, and so you can basically, instead of using the actual word which, which is one of these nuuli versions, you can just also uh, put the particle k behind the element that is questioned, so it always follows the element, which is actually, I think, always a noun. I've not seen any other versions of it, and it means the same. Um, I also think that there is a still small difference in the accurate translation, um, which is an, only an hypothesis because Nico said that they are completely interchangeable and he did not see any differences in this. But I do think that um, the, the version with Nuuli, Rizua Momongo Nuuli, is probably more translated like the river you fish in is which, which would also make sense since the N appears there again. So I suppose even though it is part of the word complex that it still has the same function of um, the relative marker. Mm -hmm. And the other version, the Bezua Momongo Ke, just could be translated better with you fish in rich river. In the end, of course, it probably comes to the same uh, answer. So uh, that's why Nico didn't really see a difference in this. Um, yeah, a similar set of these alternatives can also be found for when. Uh, and this time, Nico actually did say that this is uh, a difference. So when you ask, when does the boy fish, umungenya uzua nali, we have the word nali for when. Or the other version he gave me was umungenya uzua matungo ke. So literally, uh, which time does the boy fish? So this which is used here to be used on time to form the word when. And he told me that nali is for days, like today, yesterday, and tomorrow, or times of day, like morning, evening, and afternoon, while matungo ke is more for specific times. So I think something like maybe after I cooked a meal and then I fish, something like that, something specific, or however the um, times of the day work there. Um, and this same, um, thing also works with why. So if we have the reason, uh, the sentence, the child cries because of the boy, Nwana uh, ukulela ko nsoko amuhumba. The reason nsoko, um, the reason is nsoko and amuhumba is the boy. I wasn't completely sure what the ko element is, if it's just something like for reason or with the reason. So I just put a question mark. Um, and if we ask, 
why does the child cry? We can either ask Umwana Ukulela Niki or Umwana Ukulela Konso Koke. So literally, um, for what reason does the child cry? So again, this is also a type of the, the which thing where we can just say for which reason instead of why itself. And if you look at 13 and 15, you can see that it's basically the exact same sentence, except for that the question particle in the actual sentence is just the boy. So the reason is uh, found in, in this place. Mm. And then this combination with the noun uh, plus the K, which has been like in all of the previous examples, can also be used to express the question word for what kind, because there's no question word for that in Ihansu, neither is there in German or English, but there are all languages where that is the thing. So if we have the sentence, onene kulia muntanda ke, there would be uh, what kind of meat am I eating? So which is this question particle can specify the meat more or the, the object more. Um, yeah, and then for my focus, this was the influence of noun classes on this WH words, um, because some question words um, change partially depending on the noun class, they are marked for the class. And there are 18 noun classes in Ihansu, but my focus is only on the classes 1 to 11 and 14, because that's the ones that Andrew gave me at the beginning, I guess, that's just the ones with the safest input, I guess. Um, and I specifically researched who's and which, so I have a full paradigm for these classes for these types of words. So first, which is formed with uli and a noun class specific uh, n element in front of it. So as I said before, n here is still possibly a relative marker as it stays present in every version, no matter the noun class. And it works that you have the noun, then the n, the class marker, and then the uli. So for example, uh, if you have the word kintu, thing, which is noun class seven, and you wanted to ask which thing, you would say kintu, niki, uli, because the iki is um, the class marker for which for class seven. And I've done this, of course, with all of the classes that there are, but I'm just going to show you a few examples, otherwise it's going to take ages. So, um, for example, for class one, uh, which child is that? It's nu uli. For class two, it's nea uli. For class five, it's nini uli. And for class six, it's na uli. And here's a full uh, table with all of the versions for all of the different classes that I looked at. And I don't know if it means anything, but I found it interesting to point out that um, there are some identical forms, for example, three and 14, four and nine and eight and 10 in the classes. And I think maybe if you looked at the other classes that are still missing, you would find more identical forms for it too. Um, yeah, and then the other word was whose, and whose is formed with nyanyu, which means who, and a class specific version of moi in front of it. And I'm not sure about moi, but I think it could be either a verb with, uh, with the meaning of to belong to or another type of syntactic or semantic element that expresses possession. So it works that you have the noun, the class marker, then the moi, and at the end, always the nyanyu. Um, so for example, if we have mwambe, which means cows in the plural, um, this is noun class 10. So if you asked whose cows, you would say mwambe, yangwa, nyanyu, as the ya, or, or at least the, um, the y is the marker for the class 10. Again, I have these uh, examples again for class one, we have wangwa, for class two, we have angwa, for class five, we have langwa, and for class seven, we have kangwa, that's the example that Elizabeth was talking about, with whose finger is that, um, so here's the infamous example. Um, yeah, and here's a paradigm for all the classes for whose, so we have wangwa, angwa, langwa, kangwa, and yangwa in the classes that I looked at. Um, and yeah, I, I would be very interested to see what the other classes are for that too. And here's my conclusion. So first of all, the answer is the WH in situ question with a possibility to initialize the WH word. The initialization of this WH word leads to grammatical changes in the phrase that might lead to a slightly different uh, semantic interpretation. And some words can also be expressed by a version with a question particle K and some WH words stay the same, but others like who's, which, and how many differ based on the noun class. Um, and the things that I would find very interesting and 
what financial thing for future research or didn't get to in the time that we uh, were doing the class was um, the noun class influence on nga, so how many, because it was also one that was changing based on noun class, then the connection between the noun classes and phonetics, because even though I have like the full paradigm of the different um, versions, I don't really know why they uh, came to be or why they are what they are. And then, of course, the other classes, 12 to 13 and 15 to 18, which are still missing because I didn't do them. <laughs> and yeah, that's, thank you for your attention. That's it. Brilliant. Um, that was uh, a great uh, talk, Maren. Thank you for the, um, thank you for presenting everything so clearly. Um, yeah. Uh, the Ngwa jumps out at me uh immediately we have this feeling that it's sort of yeah just like as you identified it i'm glad that you sort of brought it up and, and described it in this way just sort of this way of indicating possession or ownership it's not possessive particle because there, there's that as well which is you know it's widespread in Hanzu. but then there's this moi sort of thing and um it's very widespread in tanzania i don't know how widespread it is elsewhere um and I don't know the difference between when you would employ something, when you would employ a moi form, and when you would just use the possessive particle. So you could say something like, uh, like the 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 child's or the like the boy's water. You could say something like, "Imadzi." I'm gonna get the noun class wrong. "Imadzi," ya, or maybe like cattle. You could be like the cow of the boy, the boy's cow. You could go, Engombe ya, uh, ya muhomba. But then we have this form like Engombe anya or something like that. You would use a ngwa form. So I don't know what the difference between those two things would be. Um, uh, you can also see little bits of it in other languages nearby and even in Ihanzu. So when the people from the area talk about the Ihanzu language. They'll often say ki nyi. Well, even in even in uh, even in Ihanzu, they would say ki nyi Hanzu, right? And that nyi, we know that Ihanzu is it designates the you know it's it's the it's the root Ihanzu person. And I know that ki is the class marker for language, but then that nyi, I I think it has something to do with the possession. But I don't know. But there's tons of languages around that use this, and um, I think there are other specific sort of things other than languages that employ this possessive form. It's really interesting. I know that you don't have any specific answer, but I I really do need to say that it's uh, it's something that needs to be looked at. I don't know if we have any questions uh, from Zoom immediately. Uh, I'll just turn around. Nothing from Stan immediately. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Oh, hand up from Stan. Yes. yes, yes Andrew. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to comment uh, on, on this Nyi morpheme. I've heard, I, I'm not sure that uh, it's a right thing, but I've heard this Nyi comes from the word that stays for mother in some languages. So this Nyi comes yeah. from mother. Like it's mother tongue or something like this. Niha, for example, for ha language. Ni sanzu for like mother tongue uh, of isanzu people, something like this. I think I think I've heard this before, and I'm not sure if you told me this or somebody else told me this. But you're you're yeah. This isn't the first time that I've heard about this ni and mother connection. So that's something that I think that we need to look into um, more. And what does that mean then, like from a semantic perspective, when we employ this form versus uh, another form? I was really surprised when Nico was uh, was employing these forms. Uh, here, but um, yeah, really, really interesting and uh, and worth another look. I, I would I would suspect I would expect that this additional morpheme um, expresses uh, like uh, em emphatic meaning. Like this is yes, this is mine. Yes, this is truly mine. Something like this. This this mother is truly of this boy. Mm. Something in this way. This is the this is the vague this is the vague sort of feeling that I get when I see it as well, 
Uh, and it would be worth looking at being like, you know, where does this occur? How do people talk about it in a corpus of natural speech? And then also like doing a licitation, like how do you feel about, you know, about these two different forms? Very cool. I'm, uh, I'm glad that you have thoughts on this as well, uh, Stanislav. Um, I, I have a few things more. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> uh, so I, I think on the, somewhere on the slides, uh, I saw this morphine core with a question mark. Ah, uh, yes. I would say it's class number 17. It's yeah. locative. It can be locative. Hmm. Yeah. Con soco. Because of what reason? Yeah. Why? To, to reason. To which reason it is attached? And then uh, another comment. Um, uh, I, I would like to know um, how do you develop this um, this questionnaires you use because I can see the logic is we take something that uh, that exists as a system in a Germanic language and then we test whether there is like a, a, a like I don't know a parallel structure in a Bantu language uh, which actually does not exist so we could see that these question words show at least three different patterns so in Germanic languages they're beautifully aligned and it's really a system a subsystem wh questions but in bantu languages it, fun it functions in another way and that's why I, I would like to ask you whether you use uh, this very famous question on uh, morphosyntax of bantu languages developed by herman batibo so i didn't i didn't show that to these guys so they were going in completely uh completely blind as to the idiosyncrasies of Bantu and, and, its, and its differences from, say, for example, a Germanic language. Yes, because it's, um, th th this question on morphosyntax of Bantu languages contains typical structures mm. that are found across Bantu languages. And I think it's worth to have a look at it before developing a questioner. This is how I see it. It might be like, my approach only. And this, uh, and, and Batibo's questionnaire, I know that you made quite heavy use of uh, in, in, your data, in your data collection, Stanislav. Yes, yes, I, I have this question. I can send it to you if, if you want to have it. Yeah. So it's like elicited from native speakers. So there are these questions in English and in Swahili, and then the translation, direct translation into Isanzu. It's good. Uh, it's good feedback, Stanislav. I appreciate that. Does anybody else have any immediate Welcome. questions? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so you said uh, that um, WH words remain in situ normally, but they can be uh, moved, right? They can be pulled to the front, but it does change the sentence. Yeah. Sense. Okay. But um, was it the case for all WH words? Uh, yeah, I didn't show all, but uh, I think I did ask all the ones that I had on the list in the front that I asked him, okay, and now put it to the front and it worked the very same for all of them. Because there are languages where it's restricted a certain WH, um, the languages that show WH in C2 and movement sometimes restrict um, the WH words for which it's possible. Yeah, I don't possible. think I came across that. I think it was like he had, he had, uh, he definitely had an answer for all of them. So I, I just trusted him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I just thought about it for an interest in that would have been the case. And another question you said, um, you can see um, sometimes that in my experience was with a lot of questions and if there something is interchangeable or not, um, informants will say, yes, it's interchangeable, but there is a difference in fact, but sometimes they don't know the difference because they do it intuitionally and also they want to be as cooperative as possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, sometimes it's really um, helpful just to uh, have a hypothesis and then ask, can I say it in this context? Because then you get more precise answer than if you just ask, is it interchangeable? And they always say yes. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yes. Yata. Um, I was wondering about this question particle K. Um, so so you can also attach it to the to the subject, I guess. Did you test that? 
and then have like so for this sentence here so um which child cried so you could say wana ke ukulela or i don't think i looked at that specifically but i i do think that would work because the, um, the ke behind any type of noun usually just meant which bad thing or depending on what it was something what kind of bad thing so i think that would work but I, i don't think i have any question that was like that structured specifically yeah i was just so i was just curious whether you could also do that with verbs so whether you can whether you can attach it to verbs or whether it's noun specific so whether you can say something like umwana ukulela ke or I don't know what the verb should be. It should probably be some do verb, um, some dummy verb, and then plus ke. Um, but I don't know what, um, I was just, just uh, curious whether like, by any chance you also tried that. I'm, I'm going through my mind here to see if I have a, have I, I can't think of any, yeah. I will uh, ask us to once again, uh, thank Marin for a, a great talk. Thank you. And, uh...